Good morning. I'm Sister Nella Sammons from Tornado Apostolic Church, Tornado, West Virginia, coming to you a devotion, which I'm going to do part one to this morning of God's Got This. When situations arise, especially when they arise for someone else, we're quick to try to give words of encouragement. We'll often say, cheer up, God's got this acting like it um, is the catch-all fix, all statement. That is not true, according to the Bible. So many times when situations arise, especially when they arise for someone else, we're quick to give words of encouragement if a person is depressed, or we often uh, will say, cheer up, God's got this. If they are facing a sickness or illness, we will say, we know God is a healer and God's got this. During times of bereavement, we will try to encourage people and say God never makes a mistake and God's got this. Many times we use this phrase acting like it is the catch-all, fix-all statement. We will tell that to everyone in every situation. And unfortunately, that is not true, according to the Bible. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Understand, there is no spiritual blessing left outside of Jesus Christ. No spiritual blessings may be received outside of Christ. Now, someone may say, but what about Matthew 5:45, which says that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Understand that there are natural and physical blessing that everyone receives because of the love of God. And that is what Matthew 5:45 is talking about then there is spiritual blessings that only apply to those that are in Christ Jesus. These are spiritual blessings. They are offered to everyone, but only those that are in Christ Jesus are able to receive these blessings. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Understand there is a standard of holiness, and unless that standard of holiness is met, then certain blessings will not pertain to everyone. Ephesians 4, 17 through 19 states how those that are in Christ must act and how those outside of Christ act. It says this, I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the, their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God throughout the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all the uncleanness with greediness. Romans 8 and 9 says, But Ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Today I want to look at the statement, God's got this, and ask this question. So when we say God's got this, what is this that God's got? Isaiah 41, 8 through 10, 13. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness, behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. 
Thou shalt seek them, and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. We must understand who and whose we are. Isaiah 41 and 8 says, But thou, Israel, art my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Then he makes a prophetic and an eternal statement. The seed of Abraham, my friend. Who is the seed of Abraham? Now notice that word seed is singular. There is no S at the end of it. So it, who is the seed of Abraham? Remember the Old Testament is the New Testament hid. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So let's go to the New Testament for Revelation. Galatians 3.16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not in the seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. The Bible here reveals to us in no uncertain terms that the promises made to Abraham were in the first place made to Christ who is called the seed of Abraham. I will continue this lesson uh, the next time. In Jesus' name I pray. Bless those listening today. Amen.